Good evening. Welcome to our fifth Lenten service uh, on Wednesday. So we have one more to go, and then we reach into Holy Week, which will have uh, just a Good Friday service. And then we'll have Easter. And there are two services uh, on Easter. One is a 6.30 sunrise service, followed by breakfast in the parish hall. And we are hosting this year for the community service. So um, please come and enjoy some, I got some great singers lined up, I'll tell you right now. So, uh, uh, and then, uh, then the, the traditional service at uh, nine o'clock on Easter, uh, Easter Sunday as well. Yeah? Is there a sign-up sheet in the back for Easter Sunday service, please? Oh, thank you. There is a sign-up sheet for bringing casseroles, uh, breakfast casseroles uh, for the breakfast. And uh, there might be some other items uh, on there, too. Right? Is, that, is that right, Becky? Is there some other? Uh, did, it's, it's back on. Pa pastries and fruit. I thought there was two more, a couple more items, yeah. But that's a sign-up list on the, in the table in the back. So please sign up so we can eat. Let's begin with some music. Jesus, dear. Let's follow along in our bulletins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, as a deer pants for the flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? By day the Lord commands his steadfast love. And at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forsaken me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? 
As with a deadly wound in my bones, my adversaries taunt me. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? The Samaritan woman met Jesus as he rested beside the well. Jesus knew that this woman had not lived according to God's commandments, but he graciously invited her to drink of the water of eternal life. We do not live according to God's commands as we should, yet he looks on us in grace and love. Let us come before him confident in his steadfast love to confess our sins and ask his forgiveness. God has had mercy on us. He sent his son to be our savior. Jesus took our sins unto himself, suffering the penalty of death that we deserved. I announce to you that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are refreshed in the flood of his grace. Let us pray. Almighty God, the woman of Samaria came to the well that day seeking only the refreshment of ordinary earthly water. Jesus offered to her what he offers to us. The life-giving water that wells up within us and overflows into eternal life. You refresh us with your spirit so that we will never thirst again as the woman told others in her town that she had found the Messiah. Lead us to be faithful witnesses for our Lord, so that people will believe in Jesus as their Savior and receive through him the refreshment of forgiveness and eternal life. Amen. The wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died. My richest gain I count but loss, and poor contempt on oh, my pride. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, Save in the death of Christ my God, all the vain things that charm me most, I sacrifice them to his blood. When we live in denial, we live in isolation. We have something so difficult to bear that either we do not wish to burden others with it, or we are so ashamed of it that we keep it buried, perhaps also to ourselves. We live in fear, doubt, and anxiety. But how do we become free? Free to live beyond the doubt, the fear, the anxiety, the shame. That comes by grace and forgiveness through our encounter with the promise of Christ, and for which encounter we are all the better and all the more free. Consider one particular encounter of that grace for, uh, for one who is living in fear, doubt, and shame. A Samaritan woman who came to draw water from the well. Most other women would have already come to the well earlier in the day to draw water from it. 
but she came at noon. She was not expecting to meet anyone. In fact, she was counting on it. But that's already one clue to her shame. Imagine her awkward surprise to find someone there by the side of the well. To make matters worse, the one sitting there was a man. She did not realize who the man was, that it was Jesus. Nor did she know that he was tired from a long journey while his disciples were off in the city getting some food. She wasn't expecting his, this encounter or any encounter. Complicating this rather awkward situation, the woman recognizes that Jesus is not just any man, but that he is a Jewish man. She is a Samaritan, and Jews and Samaritans didn't exactly get along. There were many prejudices, divisions, even hostilities between them. Of course, we know something about prejudices, divisions, and hostilities in our time and in our own lives. In fact, we often avoid those situations, even encounters. But as we will see, grace makes unexpected encounters. As if not bad enough for this poor woman in this particular setting to be caught out at noon looking for water, and then encountering this male Jewish stranger, that is this man whom we know as Jesus, now has the audacity to speak directly to her and with a command. Give me a drink. Today, we need to be sensitive to matters of all of such social customs, especially where there is already some injustice between genders and where women in particular are hurt by sexism and patriotism. Men giving commands to a woman is not exactly a good thing, even in the covenant of marriage. But even in this time, what Jesus did would already be considered a breach of social customs. He should not be seen with the Samaritan woman, let alone speaking to her. This awkward silence is now broken by an even more awkward command from an unknown man to a woman who wants to, wanted to be alone. However, might his talking to her in this very unexpected and awkward moment also be a moment in which grace is coming to this woman? Perhaps, but she doesn't see it this way, at least not at first. In fact, she makes a point of putting up the barriers that have divided not only genders, but peoples. Most of us would be silenced by such a quick comeback, maybe even apologetic, but Jesus is not put off to the point of leaving the woman alone. He knows that she already has had so much of being alone in her life. She is not alone in that either, as loneliness can consume us today. Instead, he dares to speak to her yet again to make this a grace moment. And so he explains his intentions of grace to her. If you knew the grace of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, you have no bucket and the well is deep. Where did you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us the well and with his sons and his flock drank from it? Sir, is something we might say to maybe an elderly person or perhaps a person with whom we are only doing business dealings. And perhaps this first use of the word sir by this woman has some of that meaning. It is respectful, but only so far. For now, the woman is only intrigued at best. Jesus mentions living water. Where is it? She wonders. Where are the flowing streams of the living water so that she can go find it for herself? wherever she wants. She would like to know so that she would not feel so constrained to keep coming to this well day after day, always in hiding, and instead find flowing streams for her life. Jesus' grace graces her even further. Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water, gushing up to eternal life. Sir, give me this water, so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Here is the second time she calls him sir. 
and this time with a little more respectful tone. Maybe she's getting somewhere. Maybe this stranger, Jesus, is on to something of interest. She dares to trust that he may not only know where such living water is, but can actually provide it himself. After all, might such living water be better than the still waters of this well? However, she is also letting down her guard of the secret she is hiding. What she betrays in this moment is that she is tired of her daily mundane attempts to keep coming to this well of Jacob, but also why it it is that she keeps coming at this time of day. Women usually came early in the morning, not at noon. Jesus will call that out from her, not to embarrass her, not to make her feel any more awkward than she already does, but to free her, to give her the courage to stand in the truth. So he says to her, Go, call your husband and come back. I have no husband. Keep in mind that Jesus only pursues this conversation at the point with such gentleness in order to free her from the darker truth she does not wish to have exposed. And he makes his next statement to her with that spirit of affirming gentleness. You are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. It may be, a, it may be that the reference to five husbands might be reference to false idols that she has clung to in her tradition as a Samaritan. And one might only be added to the hostilities between Jews and Samaritans. But it also might be a reality to a reference to five men to whom she has clung in life. Either way, this is a moment of her freedom. Her freedom from shame, from fear, from hostility and division. She does not need to fear in Jesus' presence. He knows all about her secret, but he still sees her with grace and wishes her to be free in that grace. Jesus accepts her as a woman, as a Samaritan, and even as an adulterer, whether religious or social. And he does not look upon her with shame, but with grace. We also have deep, buried, dark secrets and skeletons in our closet, afraid of the truth being disclosed, afraid of criticism and judgment, afraid of being mocked or scorned by others, That is why we keep them hidden, away from others, for fear of being discovered. But even for us, Jesus does not look upon us with shame, but with his grace, and his grace is far superior to all the other judgments, real or imagined. In Christ, we need not be afraid or ashamed. So now the woman is free to call him sir once more, but this time with much more robustly sensed as Jesus as Lord. Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worship on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Here, the challenge is put before Jesus. How will you, Lord Jesus, overcome the great barriers of hostility and prejudice that have been put in place for so long? How will you, Lord Jesus, overcome the great divides that keeps us apart from the others? in gender, in race, in orientation, in values, in politics, in being shunned and isolated. The list goes on, but all of them are things in which we just don't even discuss so openly and candidly without fear, without shame. For this, Jesus will point to where his journey is leading. With his, his will will be the hour that will bring reconciliation between us and his hour is is his own cross, where all the prejudice, hostilities between peoples are put to rest in this body and his blood shed for us, where the path of violence and hostility gives way to the path of peace, and where the shame of, of our sin is overcome by healing and wholeness. His hour, his cross, brings this grace to us. So Jesus says to the woman, The hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. 
Grace makes unexpected encounters, and we will continue to make unexpected encounters. It encounters all of us in our darkness and frees us to the truth that we really do not need to be living in fear and alienation from peoples, that we do not need to be afraid of our own past and the truth of our sins. Instead, we are spirited to a new truth, the truth of Jesus himself. For the woman at the well, this truth now stands before her, and she is now but a heartbeat away from her own bold confession of faith. I know the Messiah, the one who is called Christ, is coming. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then, the disciples return. They see Jesus speaking to her. Perhaps they, like us, are a bit embarrassed, still caught up in the old ways of keeping up our walls and barriers and good appearances. Perhaps it may even seem to them an awkward moment. Why is Jesus engaging a conversation with one so distant, so foreign, so shameful? For this woman, that distance, that foreignness, that shame now gives way to Christ's grace, the grace that overcomes all our sins and division, that leaves no one ashamed or afraid. The disciples, too, will grow in this grace, just as we also become people with the fullness of the living water, his truth and spirit. The woman of this story has fled this scene, but not in fear or shame. She leaves behind her water jar, that symbol of all the old water of the well. Now she flees with the newness of the living water she has running through her veins, the gift of grace she has received from Jesus. For her, it was like Easter morning, she will run to her townspeople with all the boldness of a new woman with such truth and spirit that she still shakes from sheer joy. Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? So the others of Samaria did come to be with Jesus, and there, there would be celebrations of grace that would last for days more in his presence. And in the sharing and in the gathering of his grace, they would also come to make their own bold testimonies, saying to the women, woman with gratitude, but also with personal joy in the presence of Jesus, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. When Jesus would rise from the dead, he would instruct his disciples to take his message of his amazing grace not just to Jerusalem, but to all Judea, back to Samaria, and to all the ends of the earth, so that joy and freedom may abound for all. For grace makes unexpected counters, encounters, breaking, them, breaking down all the walls of anger and hostility, sin and death, fear and shame. We have been graced with the living waters of Jesus the Christ, who has overcome all our fear and shame. Now with the living waters of Christ in our own veins, we are free to go and make some unexpected counters of our own, so that through our own witness, we may testify to the Savior of the world where no one need live any longer in fear and shame, but instead be truly free. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. The Lord has promised good to me his word my hope secures he will my shield and portion be as long as life endures 
Yes, when this flesh and heart shall fail, and mortal life shall cease, I shall possess within the veil a life of joy and peace. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you graciously invited the Samaritan woman to believe in you as the Messiah and Savior, to drink of living water of the Spirit. We too trust in you as our Lord and Savior. You have given to us the gift of the precious living water that is the Spirit of God, welling up to eternal life. Gracious Lord, Lord Jesus, we pray that you would continue to sustain us with your spirit during this earthly life. Fill us with the peace and hope that are found only through repentance and forgiveness in your name. Help us to grow in grace and strength of faith through the study of your holy word so that we might serve others in your name. Gracious Lord, Lord Jesus, we pray for those who thirst for help and hope. In their suffering, comfort those who face illness, grief, and loss in their own lives and in the lives of loved ones. Empower us by your Spirit to comfort them and with the promises of your word, gracious Lord. Lord Jesus, we look forward to the day when we will live forever in your presence and drink from the water of the river of life in paradise. Until that great day, lead us to show mercy to others and to share our blessings to satisfy their earthly needs, their hunger and thirst. Gracious Lord. Lord Jesus, you asked the Samaritan woman for a drink of water, beginning the conversation that led to her to trust in you as her Savior. She then told the people of her town about you, and they too believed. Help us by your Spirit to begin such conversations with our friends and neighbors so that they will believe and worship you as their King and Savior. Gracious Lord. Have mercy on us and hear our prayer. Amen. Let us, let us say the Lord's Prayer, the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd. He will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Come to Calvary's holy mountain, sinners ruined by the fall. Here a pure and healing fountain flows for you, for me, for all. In a full perpetual tide, open when our Savior died. They that drink shall live forever, Tis a soul-renewing flood. God is faithful, God will never break his covenant of blood. Sign when our Redeemer died, seal when he was glorified. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.